excited. If you've had a year like I've had a year, you would understand the excitement that I have on the inside of me. God allowed us to be here today together to exit one year and walk into a new year. Don't allow anything to distract or destroy you. Y'all, it's time to have church. Remove all of the craziness out of your head and let's give God a praise because we made it. We share everything else, but let's share how God has redeemed us. Let's share how God has delivered us. Let's share how God has set us free. Let's share how when we couldn't see our way, he made a way. Let's share that we're still here tonight because of the grace and the mercy of God. Let's share that we're still here healed in our right mind. Let's share the goodness of Jesus on tonight. Let's share some positive vibes on tonight because he's that good. So do yourself a favor. Don't do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Every chance you get, I need y'all to scream, holler, and make some noise. Every chance you get, I need you to jump up and exalt his name. Every opportunity you get, I want to see hands clapping, feet moving. I mean, smiles on your face. No, it ain't always perfect. No, we didn't always get what we wanted. No, we don't always feel good about our decisions. But because God graced us and because God lifted us up and he woke us up this morning and started us on our way and we're here tonight to cross over into a new dimension that's enough that's enough that's enough that's enough so we're gonna make it clear nobody's going hoarse tonight screaming and pumping you up nobody's gonna go hoarse tonight doing that nobody's gonna say come on and clap come on and clap come on and clap no 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 no. because all it took was a thought on tonight we understand what it has been but the fact of the matter that we're standing i can see you can you see me i can wave at you can you wave at me i can clap my hands can you clap i can smile can you smile i can pick them up and put them down can you do it so if everything is functioning properly let it you to participate we don't want you to look guess what this is all of our service and we've come to put a smile on god's face let's go y'all
every breath I take, I'm going to bless your name.
whatever you tell me, Jesus, we will be satisfied. Come on, whatever you do, Lord, we will be satisfied. Keep singing that. Oh, I will be. I will be satisfied. Come on, whatever you bless us with, Lord, we will be satisfied. I will trust your word. Guess what? You have complete control, have Jesus. Complete control. And we will be satisfied. Come on, where you leave, where you leave, where you leave it. Come on.
I need all of the satisfied people just to stand back on your feet and give God praise. Come on, I know you just sat down and you're probably been tired, but I need all of the satisfied people that are just grateful for what the Lord has already done to give them glory with the hand clap, with the foot tap. Come on, praise them because it's coming back. I want to hear the sound of victory. The people that are satisfied that your testimony is, I may not have all that I want, I may not have all that I need, but I'm satisfied with what he's already done. Y'all too quiet. You don't have to touch anybody, but tell somebody near you, I'm satisfied. Come on, tell somebody behind you, I, I'm satisfied. Yes, I am. I'm satisfied. Tell somebody he's been good to me. He's been better.
just lean around and tell somebody I'm still standing I'm still I ain't got no help in here I said I'm still standing I don't have the same friends I had last year I don't have the same money I had last year COVID couldn't kill me sickness couldn't take you out Tell somebody I'm still standing. And by this time tomorrow, where's the rest of my church? Maybe they shouting on Facebook. I said, by this time tomorrow, I will have made it over. Hey. Yeah. I'll wait until Sunday. 365 days. Some days I didn't think I would make it. But here we are. Do me a favor, take your left hand and your right hand and touch your shoulders. Touch your thigh and your leg. And if you can feel everything, you should give him praise because everything is intact. I said everything is intact. The enemy's job was to try to break you down. But when you woke up this morning, you woke up with your right mind, with the activity of your limbs. Do me a favor, move out in the aisle real quick. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to just move around and declare your area to be a blessed area, a miracle area, a breakthrough area. And by the time we cross over, everything will be all right. Somebody shout yeah! Oh, oh. Hey! Let's have church. I said let's have church. I wish somebody would warn the spirit. We come against every distraction. We bind the hand of the enemy. We plead the blood of Jesus against every assignment. Somebody shout oh! oh, oh. God is a good God. Even on a bad day. Yes, sir. Hey, hey. Oh, oh. The old church would say it's been a long uphill journey. I said it's been a long uphill journey. Oh. Well, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh! It's because of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Listen, it's past my bedtime, and I didn't come here to look at anybody, but I came to give God glory. I said it's because of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. His compassions fail not, and his mercies are new every morning. I said his mercies are new every morning. Hallelujah. It's been a long 365 days but what we know if we don't know anything else if we keep going we will live to see the other side of this anybody looking to see the other side of it come on I'm going to hear a few more people that's looking to see the other side some of us have been going through for too long but we believe God for the other side of this and we're so grateful so while we are preparing for worship we want to honor the Lord for uh, our Bishop A.L. Jim Wright and Lady Harriet Porter Jim Wright. Come on, let's give the Lord praise for our Bishop Kevin L. Long and for our Lady Tarshay. Come on, let's give God glory for our leaders tonight, for all of our leaders and ministers and elders and all of you in your respective places. This is truly the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, we're not going to be here all night, but we do believe God is going to be glorified and we're going to have an amazing worship experience. I came in here tonight with expectation, believing that God was going to meet and exceed our expectations. And by the time we get home next year, we will be in our next. Come on, I wish I had somebody here. I said by the time we get home next year, we will be in our next. At this time, we will have our scripture by Minister Ellis. And right after that, Elder Shirley Kelly is going to come with our invocation and after which the music ministry is going to come back to us and minister to us in song. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Good evening, church family. This evening, our scripture will be coming from the book of Romans. That's Romans chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. And notice what it says. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into his, this grace in which we stand. But notice this, rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also have glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. And verse 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us the word of God for the people of God. in the name of Jesus that your servant bow this afternoon. Father, it's in the name of Jesus we acknowledge that you are God and beside thee there's none other. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we confess, Lord, that we've said something wrong, we've done something wrong. But Father, right now in the name of Jesus, thank you for being a forgiver of sins, Lord. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, God, we need you in this house, God. And Father, I realize and know that you are welcome in this house, God. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We come this afternoon, God, to worship you, Father. So we serve notice on the devil now, God. Oh, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God. He has no authority in this place, God. So, Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. God, we ask you to stir up the spirit in here, God. Your Holy Spirit in this house, God. We bind dead spirits now, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. We bind tired spirits now, in the name of Jesus, God. We want to say thank you, Lord God, for entering in, Father. Thank you right now, Father, for loving us unconditionally, Father. So, Father, right now, we pray, Lord God, for the Bishop, God. Bishop Anthony Elgin, my God. Harriet Porterton, my God. We just want to say thank you, Lord God, for these servants of yours, God. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, Allow your Holy Spirit, God, to reign in this place, God. Oh, God, fresh anointing, God. Let your all boy flow in this place, God, that you alone will get glory, Father. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, prepare this sanctuary, God, to give you worship. Prepare this sanctuary, God, to give you praise. Prepare this sanctuary, God, to bless your people, God. We speak healing in the house, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Some came in tired, God. Some came in weary, God. But, God, they will not leave it out the way they came in. And I plead the blood of Jesus in this house right now in the name of Jesus, God. You say whatsoever we ask in your son Jesus' name, it shall be done. So right now in the name of Jesus, God, oh, we take our power over the authority of the enemy, God. Everything is not like you, God. Must fall subject to your power and to your authority. Hallelujah, Jesus. Get your glory, Master. We didn't come out to look at we come out to serve. We come out to worship you, Father. So, Father, have your way in this house. Have your way, God, in this house. It's in the name of Jesus, God. And all of God's children said amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus.
need everybody to jump to your feet and put your hands together. We're going to take it back just a little bit. Do it. 
lift your hands and shout, Lord, I need your help. Ask the Lord to send your help now. How many of you believe that the Lord is your help? I said, how many believe that the Lord is your help? They would sing a song that says, I've searched all over, but I can't find anybody. Jesus, he is my help. Can we give the Lord praise for this music ministry and this band? Come on, for our minister Tony. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Brother Quay, for these singers that have ministered to us out of the depths of their soul tonight. We are so grateful for the Lord being our help. Hallelujah, somebody. One of these days, we're going to get excited about the Lord just being our help. We won't have to praise him for materialistic things, but is anybody grateful that the Lord is your help? He's always been your help, and he'll always be your help. I don't care who leaves, who walks out, who walks away. You can always depend on God to be your help. He'll show up when nobody else will. He'll stick around when everybody else leaves. Just lift your hands and wave it and shout, the Lord is my help. He is my help. He helped me through 365 days. And I believe he's going to do it again. Just wave your hand at me and tell me, Lord, do it again. We want the Lord to do it again. And so we're so grateful for what we have already experienced. And I do believe that there is a word from the Lord tonight. So we are going to move expeditiously at this point that we might take care of ministry business. I want all of us to prepare our hearts and minds for the ministry of giving um, at this moment. The giving options will be uh, on the screen and as well on your social media sites if you're watching from home or from your various destinations. Uh, we believe that you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. They would say the more you give, the more the Lord will give back to you. And the Bible says, press down, shaken together, and running over what he calls men to give to you. How many of you believe that whatever the Lord gives to you, whatever he calls his people to give to you, you don't have to work for? Hello, somebody. This next season of our lives, I believe that this next year, God is going to cause people to give. He's going to cause people to give. And it's going to be because you sowed. You took your time. You took your resources. And you sowed out of your need. Those of us that are giving in person, you know how to do so. If you're giving electronically, the options are behind me here. We want to prepare to do that. We want you to give liberally tonight. We want you to give out of the abundance of what you have in great expectation. Somebody shout in great expectation. Somebody shout it again in great expectation for what we believe the Lord is going to do for us individually and corporately because I believe whatever you make happen for the Lord's house, he's going to make happen for yours. So tonight, if you want to sow a seed tonight, it's the best, the best that you can you want to sow a $20 seed, a $22 seed, a $202 seed, a $222 seed, a $2,000 seed, however you decide to do it, we want you to be blessed in that regard. The ushers are coming with the baskets. Those of you that are standing, that will be standing to give, you can stand now. We're going to pray over and bless these seeds as you pre prepare to give tonight. In Jesus' name, we see people standing. We people stand if you're giving by check, by cash. We might even take food stamp tonight. Whatever you have, we're going to take it in Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. We thank you so much in advance. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. So when you're coming around, I want you to come around grateful and glad that the seed that you've sown, God has already returned it in Jesus' name. Lift those gifts in your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for these thy people that have sown these seeds. We pray that you would return it to them. Some 60 and some 100 fold return it to them in Jesus' name. We thank you in advance that no house will go in lack, that no one will fall short for the sake of sacrifice tonight. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. You can follow the directions of the ushers and come around from wherever you are. Again, if you are giving electronically, you can do so. You can still march around and tap the basket with your phone in faith that we'll know that you're giving with the rest of us. In the name of Jesus.
you so much for your liberal giving. For those of you that are still giving online, we appreciate you most certainly for joining us tonight in this watch night service of 2021. We are believing God for greater and more and bigger and better in the years to come, most certainly in the year 2022. If I don't speak to you again, happy new you, happy new year. At this time, can everyone here rest to your feet as we make way for our presiding bishop and prelate, Bishop Anthony L. Jenright, as he comes to introduce our speaker for the evening. Come on, can we make noise? Can we give the Lord praise? Come on, can we give him praise? God bless you, my father's children. Why don't you look at somebody to the right of you and tell them I bless you tonight in the name of Jesus. Look at somebody to the left of you and tell them I bless you tonight in the name of Jesus. Look at somebody, anybody, and tell them this is the best night of your life. Tell them you're getting ready to cross over into a brand new year. Open up your mouth and shout glory in the room. God bless you. I want to greet all of you. You can remain standing just for a moment. I want to greet all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And certainly we thank all of you for being here. And especially we greet those that are watching us via Facebook live streaming tonight. We believe that you have tuned into the right ministry. The Gap Church International, Charlotte, North Carolina. And God is going to bless you. So don't begin to flip from pay from church the church or ministry ministry or whatever stay right where you are stay right where you, do you hear me stay right where you are because something great is about to happen and you are going to benefit from it tonight I am I, let me just thank God for those of you that are in this room you know we're in a strange season you know and um, the enemy is working overtime especially now with this COVID-19 and now this Omicron variant and all of this, all that is going on, and uh, many people are struggling. But you're still here. Do not take for granted your being here. God is not through with you yet. I believe that if we stay plugged in, eyes have not seen nor ears heard, nor has it entered in the hearts of man the great things that God has in store for the believer. 2021 has been a challenging year, but you made it. Open your mouth and declare, I made it. My God, yes, you did. I made it. And guess what? You're getting ready to embark upon a brand new year. Not long from now. And so I just want you to open up your hearts and your minds and your spirits. And don't allow anything to rob you of joy tonight. You ought to praise him for where he brought you from. And then you ought to kick it up in high gear and praise him for where he's getting ready to take you. Hallelujah. So I believe that we are coming upon a banner year unprecedented year. You're going to see things happen in your life that you've never seen nor imagined before. God is going to go out of his way to bless you. Yes, he is. And I'm so excited about it. I want to welcome all of you that are visiting with us. Thank you for being here on tonight. All of the wonderful ministers of the gospel who are here. 
God bless you, every minister, whatever title you hold, whether you are a bishop, elder, pastor, minister, whatever, just wave your hand wherever you are. God bless you. Thank you for being here with us. Amen. God bless you. And we're just so excited. We are grateful to have with us tonight, joining us in this worship, the Temple Church International of Charlotte, North Carolina. Hallelujah. Temple Church is our church as well. They are our brothers and our sisters, and we're so grateful. And I thank God for you. Praise God tonight for Pastor Harriet Porter Jenright, our co-leader in ministry. Thank God for her. And of course, we are so grateful tonight to have the First Lady of the Temple Church International. Amen. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the the bishop do the honors, but I've been wanting to say that. The First Lady of the Temple Church International. Amen. God bless you. But tonight, I am just so grateful to present our preacher in the person of Bishop Kevin L. Long, the senior leader of the Temple Church International, Charlotte, North Carolina. A prophetic, a prophetic voice of the time in which we now live. God has uniquely anointed this man and has gifted him with the ability to see beyond where we are. He stays plugged in to the ways and the will of God. And what I love about him is he is serious about the things of the kingdom. I'm honored and I'm proud to be his father in ministry. He's a son of mine, and he's a son in whom I'm well pleased. And tonight it gives me great joy and honor to present our preacher in the person of Bishop Kevin L. Long. Now let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we are getting ready to hear from heaven. How many of y'all know we get ready to hear from heaven? This man can preach and will preach whether you help him or not. I mean, if you are saved, you can't help but help him preach. And so tonight, after this praise team blesses us with singing, the next voice you will hear will be that of Bishop Kevin L. Long. Now listen, I want us to stay connected. I don't want you to, 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 to walk out because you, you, you can't get a flight to New York now to get to Times Square <laughs> so that you can watch the ball drop, you know. And you don't want to need to worry about trying to get downtown because, you know, it, 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 it's, 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 it's too many folk. You're in the right place at the right time. I don't want you to move because we want to break in the new year together in worship and we want to celebrate our Christ with the Lord's Supper as we begin the new year. So I don't want you to leave, run out of here, you know, at trying to get somewhere. D don't do that. Uh, because I want you to be able to leave here safe. Amen. All right. Y'all going to do that? Thank you so much. All right. I want you to point your hand toward Bishop Long and repeat after me. Say, Bishop Long. We're praying with you. And we're praying for you. Preach the word. We're going to help you. All right. God bless you now. Hallelujah. Can you just lift your hands and begin to worship the Lord? Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. You deserve all our worship and all our praise. Hallelujah. You, Lord, you are worthy. And no one can worship you for me. Oh, 
hospitalized for over, over eight days. And there was many times that I couldn't even take a breath. But as long as woo, I am breathing. This new moment, as we go into this new year, I dare you to just lift your hands and give the Lord what he deserves. Because we could have been dead this year. We shouldn't even make it to this moment, but the Lord saw fit enough for us to make it here. Ooh, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry, I'm finna move, Bishop. As long as I am. As long as I am. I am breathing. I will. Just sing about it, but this is your moment. It's not just a song, but it's a way of life. We worship you, Jesus, in the beauty of your holiness. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here we are to worship Jesus. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say that you're our God. about 48 minutes should the Lord be merciful to us we will have crossed over from the year that was 2021 to the year that will be 2022 what better way to cross over than to worship I'm, I'm, I'm going to share what I have but in Isaiah chapter number 6, while the prophet Isaiah is actually performing his priestly duties, he's worshiping in the temple and he says, it was on the day that Uzziah died that I saw also the Lord. He was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings, with two he covered his feet, two he covered his face, two he flew. But he said something real interesting. As I worship him in earth, I heard worship in heaven. He said, I didn't hear music. Not the music we hear on earth. He said, but I heard one angel cry to the other, holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord of hosts, the earth is full of his glory. I wish we could just take a few seconds right now and worship on earth as they did in heaven. Right now, the angels are crying holy. They were making music with their own voices. Without the assistance of the musicians, I need somebody just to Begin to worship him with the fruit of your lips. Come on. Come on with the fruit of your lips. That's what he wants to hear most. He loves to hear the music. He loves to hear the musicians. He loves to hear the singers. I'm sure he loves to hear the word of God expounded upon. But what he loves most is to hear his children worship him. Come on, will you please lift your voices and worship now? 
that sweet music to his ear. Open your mouth and give him glory tonight. Come on, out the fruit of your lips, out of the depths of your belly. Come on, worship him. You have every reason to worship him. <laughs> he brought you through a year that was turbulent and trying. and A year of difficulty, a year of uncertainty. A year where many died, but you're still here. I wish I had some real worshipers in here. Come on, come on. Worship him with the fruit of your lips. Come on, just a few more seconds. Just a few more seconds. As the angels are crying holy, you cry holy. As the angels are crying holy, you cry holy. Hallelujah. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we come tonight simply saying thank you for 365 days you've been God to us through many dangers toils and snares you've brought us through much turmoil and much turbulence you secured us you kept us when we couldn't keep ourselves tonight we want to say thank you with 45 minutes left in this day and in this year God if we don't tell you anything else we want to tell you much obliged God we thank you for your grace and your mercy we thank you for the gift of faith the gift of favor and the gift of the forgiveness of our sins and tonight, God, we stand in this place with the express purpose of worshiping you. And as we worship you, it is our prayer that you would speak to us. Share your heart, reveal your mind, any way you bless us, we will be satisfied. Saturate this building with your presence. Linger with us just a little while longer. Take up habitation with these, your people. For we're hungry for you. We want more of you. Oh God, we want more of you. And we thank you now for this honor and privilege you've given us to share in this place. I yield myself to you now. Think through my mind, speak through my mouth, move through my body. That you might be glorified, these your people might be edified. That the enemy of our existence and the foe of our future, Satan himself, might be horrified. Grant me preaching power. In Jesus' name we pray. And we boldly declare the devil is defeated. God, you are exalted. And Jesus, you are Lord. And all who agree with the prayer of the man of God shouted hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, put those hands together and give God a hand clap of praise. Open your mouth and tell God thank you. Hallelujah. And while you're yet standing with those same blessed hands, will you please help me to celebrate the angel of this house, my father in the gospel, my covering, Bishop Anthony Leroy Jenright. We honor God for him and his very beautiful and queenly better half, Pastor Harriet Porter Jenright. Come on, let's thank God for her. to kind of tell y'all something. I'm going to let y'all in on some family business. Um, uh, Bishop is jealous of the relationship that mom and I have. And uh, he just makes it his business to try to make me look bad. 
but she ain't taking none of it. She don't hear him, don't pay him, no attention that my grandma would say. And so I thank God that as long as I'm in her good graces, everything is all right. I love them both and thank God for them. Come on, you ought to celebrate them too. Numa, TCI. TCI, he covers us. They cover us. They pray for us. I'm going to jump right into the word, but uh, also I do want to acknowledge the presence of, uh, of uh, the, the woman that uh, last time I was here, I introduced her as my fiance. And uh, for whatever reason, she didn't change her mind and she decided to go ahead and stand right at this altar and say, I do. Trying to. I was trying to rush Bishop along when he was, you know, doing the vows and all that kind of stuff. But after she said, I do, I didn't want her to change her mind. And so she stuck with me. Now, Lady Tarshay Long, thank God for you. We have, we have six head to cheer in. We're a blended family. We're the Brady Bunch. Three are here tonight. Nolan and Aaron and uh, Sleepy over there, Princeton. So I thank God for my boys who are sharing today. Every preacher of the gospel who's in this place, all of my God's children to the best church anywhere in the world besides 6100 Oro Road, Temple Church International. Thank you for sharing today. Now, y'all know me. When I leave, we're going to be the best church anywhere. But uh, we want to secure the unity and the bonds of peace. Thank God for our very well able presiding officer, my son, in whom I'm well pleased, Elder Troy Barnes. <laughs> honor you. And as my father is proud of me, I'm proud of you. Romans chapter number five. Romans chapter number five. I'm going to try to move through this so that at 12 o'clock we are eating and drinking the Lord's Supper. Romans chapter number 5. This will probably be a little different um, um, New Year's Eve message than you may have been expecting. I hope you can find encouragement in this, but this is not a message that is intended solely to encourage you, but to challenge you. Because what I found out is when come to these places in de on December 31st, we're looking for a word that jacks us up, that encourages us, that excites us, and we receive the word, watch this, but soon after, when the first trial hits, we lose sight of and let go of what we were so excited about. So I want to look at Romans chapter 5. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 1. And just kind of bear with me as I work my way through this message. Romans chapter 5, verse number 1 in the New International Version says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. We boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now here's what I want you to know. He says that we have peace with God and he says we have access by faith into the grace that God has given us. But then he turns around and says, even though I have peace with God and access, I still got to suffer. The church doesn't want to deal with suffering anymore. But tonight kind of camp out around that and I want to talk to you from the thought made better through bad times 
Just tell somebody beside you, I've been made better through these bad times. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, made better through bad times. Well, good evening, family. My brothers and my sisters, there can be no disputing the fact that the year 2021 in review has been one of the most trying years in recent and not so recent memory. The famous words of the 18th century American revolutionary Thomas Paine capture and caption our collective present predicament. Says Thomas Paine, these are the times that try men's souls. On the national and world stages, according to the CDC, the COVID-19 virus and its subsequent strands, Lambda, Delta, and Omicron, have infected 286 million people and have claimed the lives of 5,340,000 more. What's worse is the fact, Bishop Jen Wright, that COVID-19 is a disease with no cure in sight and now is proven not to discriminate between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. Yes, the world's economy is growing more and more unstable. And there is ongoing political and military unrest around the globe. A large percentage of humanity is experiencing hunger due to food insecurity, climate change due to global warming and natural resources being depleted because of selfish corporate interests endanger humans and nature alike. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. The point is, the whole world is in a state of crisis, and I'm sad to report that the body of Christ is not exempt. Yes. To add to that, we are called to be salt, light, and examples of how to ultimately deal with and overcome life's troubles and misfortunes. For the word of God declares in this same book of Romans of our text, in chapter number eight, it says, and the whole world is groaning in expectation, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. There are the key there looking for examples humans that look like them to show them how to navigate the turbulent waters of the day and time in which we live. Yes, Lord, yes. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, it is in times like these that we who are believers are required to live lives of faith. That is to say, Brother Troy, uh, that no matter how difficult the time or how challenging the circumstances, God does not give us a pass or accept excuses for us not placing total trust in him. The writer of Hebrews says it this way, and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must first believe that he exists. And then must believe that he rewards those who earnestly or diligently seek him. Mom, that is to say that uh, the only way that we uh, can harmoniously and peacefully coexist with God is to have faith in him, his promises, and his power to bring what he has promised to pass. It's good that we can come in and sing and shout and praise and worship and preach and do all of those things. But according to the Holy Scriptures, the only thing that pleases God, Elder Barnes, is that we trust him explicitly and exclusively. 
He is not moved by our pity parties. He is not moved by our desires that are not in sync with his. He is not moved by our tears that are not tears that are rooted in faith. God says that the only thing that will make you acceptable to and accepted by me is that you have faith. Somebody ought to shout faith. Faith in me and my promises and my power to bring them to pass. The interesting thing about faith then is that faith that cannot be trusted or it cannot be trusted unless it is tested. Let me say that again. Faith cannot be trusted unless faith is tested. And needless to say, faith is never tested in times of ease or certainty, but rather faith, somebody shout faith. Faith is tested in the crucible of hardship and in seasons of uncertainty. I I know I'm right about it because James, the younger brother of Jesus, the first bishop of the church, he puts it this way, count it all joy. When you fall into divers temptation, knowing this, that the trying or the testing of your faith produces patience. That is to say, he says to us three things. He says to us when it comes to our faith, that perspective plays a major role in the development of our faith. Listen to what he says. Count it all joy. When you fall into different kinds of temptation, which is a suggestion number two, that tests and trials and tribulations are unavoidable. But then number three, he says, if my perspective is right, my faith that is tested will ultimately be rewarded. Hear it again. Count it all joy when, not if, but when you fall into divers temptation, you cannot avoid it. You cannot sidestep it. You cannot skirt around it. You cannot walk away from it. You cannot shut your eyes and act like it is not happening. But when, somebody shout when, when you fall into divers temptation, to fully then appreciate the power of Romans chapter 5, we must look at the entry point. The entry point says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into grace in which we now stand. He uses then at the beginning of verse 1 the transitional word, therefore. Therefore means that the that the argument that is now ensuing is preceded by another argument. It is preceded by information that says, based upon what I told you, therefore, this is how your faith should operate. That being the case, you can't appreciate Romans 5 until you read Romans 4. And when we read Romans 4, we see Abraham's odyssey of faith. His odyssey, his trek of faith is examined. You remember Abraham. He's minding his business one day, and God steps up into his space and says to him, leave your country, leave your kindred, leave your father's house to a land that I'll show you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name uh, great. I'm going to cause you to be a blessing. Whoever blesses you, I will bless them, and whoever curses you, I will curse them. But when the writer of Romans looked at his life, he says that Abraham's life, his odyssey, is marked by delays, difficulties, bad decisions, and disappointments. Yet through every experience, his faith was developed until he eventually eventually received the promise that God had given him. You you remember Abraham when we first meet him. He does follow after God in chapter number 12. But by the time we get to chapter number 13, we find out that he has taken someone with him that he should not have taken in his nephew Lot. 
we find out that he does not trust God to keep him and to secure him because he lied about who Sarah was in his life. When we look at Abraham's life, we saw him being impatient. And because of his impatience, because he did not wait on God, he, along with his wife Sarah, concocted a plan, watch this, to make God's will manifest earlier. And through all of these things that have happened, Abraham learned how to have faith in God and to trust God to do just what he said. My brothers and my sisters, my question to us tonight is how did we view all that transpired in 2021? How did we view the delays and the difficulties and the bad decisions and the disappointments that we experienced? How did we view the bad news and the terrible reports that we experienced over the course of 2021? Because when viewed correctly, I want to submit to you that every trial and every difficulty and every disappointment and even every failure that we have experienced has developed mental value and watch this it upfits us for the upgrade that God has in store for us that if my perspective of everything that I went through in 2021 in 2020 in 2019 if my perspective is right then it means means that my faith is poised and ready to receive everything that God has prompted. Okay, Paul, help me to preach it. The people need to hear a scriptural confirmation. Paul says it this way. No matter what we go through, no matter what we experience, no matter what we encounter, all things work together for good to them who love God and are called according to his purpose. I need to survey the room. I need to check out who's in the house. I need to find out who is a person who has over the course of these few years uh, developed in their faith and developed in their hope and developed in their trust in God and his word. Who am I talking to who has the testimony that over the course of this time that I've been alive in the midst of a pandemic, I've learned that no matter how crazy things get, I can trust him, trust his word and trust his promises. Don't fool me. Who am I preaching to in here who has the testimony that I have been forced to trust God. I could see no way out. I could see no way through. I could see no way over other than to put all of my faith in him. And now my story is at the end of 2021 that even though I may not comprehend or grasp what's happening in my life, I've learned to trust in him with all of my heart and not to lean to my own understanding but in all of my ways I will acknowledge him he's promised he would direct my path who has the testimony I'm almost done that these bad times have produced a better you who has the testimony that everything that I went through it did not break me but it built me it did not cause me to throw in the towel but it caused me to throw up my hands and surrender to the will of God to my for my life who who am I talking to in here who has this testimony that I've waited this long and I'll wait until his change and watch this even if things don't change on January 1, 2022 I'll still be content to wait until my change come lift your hands open your mouth and shout yes Lord So my bad times have produced a better me. Well, for those of you who are still on the fringe, please be seated. Thank you. Please be seated. You're kind. Please be seated. For those of you who are still on the fringe, as it relates to your faith and whether or not it's going to work, Paul gives us a few things that we need to understand. He says, I've, been made, I've made peace with God now because my faith 
has been tested. And my faith can be trusted. He said, but to help you to get to where I am. He said, the first thing you need to understand, watch this, is suffering is unavoidable, but tribulation trains me to wait with tenacity. Okay, uh, let me say it again. <laughs> uh, my tribulation, my suffering, what I go through has trained me to wait with tenacity. Brothers and my sisters, uh, he says, now, if my faith qualified me to be rewarded, watch this, because I have mastered the art of waiting. <laughs> the King James Version calls it patience. Elder Laws, the NIV, calls it perseverance. But the Kevin Long Version, it ain't came out yet, it'll be out in 2024. <laughs> calls it the ability to endure the process without allowing the process to break or discourage you. Yes, all right, all right. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you with these few minutes I got left, I got 14 minutes left, uh, I, I'm trying to tell you is when I learn how to wait, I refuse to allow myself to be a prisoner of clocks and calendars. When I learn how to wait, Mom, I understand that God is sustaining me. Watch this. Putting me in sync with his timing. And my suffering is not weakening me, but rather I am being strengthened for the appointed time of manifestation. So that now, if it does not change within the next 15 minutes, or it does not change within the next 24-hour period, or it does not change within the month of January, or it does not change in the, in the first quarter of the year, it may not even change the first half of the year. But I am convinced, as Habakkuk, that the vision is for an appointed time. And at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. And because I have been trained, I feel the Holy Ghost now, because I have been trained by my tribulation, I have learned, watch this, that though it tarries, I'll wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. In other words, because I am tenacious in my waiting, I refuse to give up on what God has promised me. I need a few people in here who understand that mature faith says it doesn't matter what the clock or the calendar says. It does not matter who's getting blessed before me. It does not matter whose dreams are manifesting before mine. It does not matter whose vision is coming to pass while I'm waiting. All that matters is this. I am holding on and I won't let go of my faith. I told y'all this was not a traditional New Year's Eve message. This is only for the mature. But I need everybody in here who can shout about the fact, watch this, that whatever has gone on in your life, your faith has not failed. Whatever has happened and whatever has transpired, whatever you lost, whatever hurt or pain you encountered, you still got your faith. Come here for a minute, Jesus. Help me to preach it. Peter, you're going to go through some tribulation, but I prayed for you that your faith does not fail. I didn't pray that you wouldn't fail, for I knew that you would fail on this journey. But if your faith does not fail, you will fall and get back up. You will fail and resume your trek. Is there anybody in here who has the testimony, I'm holding on, and I won't let go of my faith. Wave at somebody beside you and say, I got faith that God's going to do what he said. All I 
God is faith. Faith brought me this far. Faith will take me on. Lift your hands and shout yes. So number one. Paul says if you want to get to the place where your faith is unshakable. He said know that whatever you've been through trained you just to wait. We don't like to wait, Tony. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I feel my help coming. They shall mount up on wings of an eagle. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh, God, number two, I got to get out of here. I got a few minutes. Number two, Paul says, if you're going to get to the place where you're at peace and harmony with God and you're pleasing him with your faith, he says, understand, watch this, that your waiting has matured you. Waiting matures you. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that's what I want you to see, Zeus. And what he says, he says, uh, he says, now, what happens is, uh, now, my suffering produces patience. But my patience produces character or perseverance. So it has matured me. I, 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 I don't mean to bust your bubble today because I, I know some of us wanted to hear something a little different. But what God wants most to see in us is his nature and his character developed. Be holy as I'm holy. Uh, to be holy, watch this, literally means to be different. And what makes God different or what makes him holy is that he is one or he is integrated with his word. So my brothers and my sisters, God wants to see his nature and character developed in us. So the longer I wait, the more mature I become. And the more mature I become, St. Quavius, the more I become like him. I am mature in my faith so that nothing moves me. The first time we see the God kind of faith, we see it operating in Genesis chapter number one. In the beginning, God created or designed the heavens and the earth. But the problem was the earth was without form and it was void and there was darkness on the face of the earth. And the Bible says that then the spirit of God moved on the face of the water. Watch this. And God said, let there be light and light came. That might not mean anything to you until you understand that what God saw with his eye and what God had in his mind were directly and diametrically opposed to one another. But God did not allow what he saw with his eye to make him change his mind about what he saw in his mind. And he opened his mouth and spoke until what was in his mind became visible. I'm going to preach whether y'all want me to or not. See, when I am mature in my faith, nothing moves me. I am like Moses in Psalm 103 verse 7 where the word declares that God made his ways known to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. You remember at the mouth of the Red Sea uh, with Pharaoh's army behind them and military garrisons on either side of them. The Red Sea is in front of them. Israel screams and shouts and is afraid because all they see is a body of water that they can't swim through. But Moses understands that God is in this entire process. And if he led us to the mouth of the Red Sea, there is something that is on the other side of the Red Sea. Uh, I'm going to talk whether y'all want me to or not. So then 
I am not focusing on what I see. I am focusing on what's on the other side. Because I understand that beyond the problem, there lies the promise. All right, if y'all can't shout with Moses, maybe you can shout with Elisha. I am like Elisha. I don't look at the things that I see, but I look at the things that are unseen. You remember, Elisha and his servant are on the top of a mountain and they're asleep. And when the servant wakes up, he looks around and he sees the enemy's army surrounding him. He wakes up the old prophet and says, we in trouble now. And the prophet wakes up and says, son, I'm getting ready to teach you a lesson of faith. He lays his hands on his servant and says, Lord, my servant is blind. He cannot see. Open his eyes. And when he removed his hand, he said, now tell me what you see. He said, I see chariots and flames of fire surrounding the enemy's army. Y'all miss what I said. When you mature in your faith, you are not looking at what is evident, but you are looking at what's beyond what you see. And God told me to tell you in 2022, whatever the enemy shows you, the exact opposite is true. I don't know who I'm talking to in here today, but real people of real faith can shout right now because everything that the enemy has been showing you, everything that the enemy has been doing to you, everything that the enemy has been trying to cause you to be confused and discouraged is nothing but a lie. And the exact opposite is true. Where are my people who have a promise from God who can shout in the devil's face because everything you see will soon pass away and everything that God promised will soon manifest. Shout yes Lord. These bad times have produced a better me. Number three I got eight minutes, and I'm out of here. But I need y'all to understand uh, that not only did my tribulation train me to wait uh, with tenacity, not only uh, has my waiting matured me, but number three, watch this. Because I'm mature, this is only for the mature folk, my faith only accepts what God has promised. Mm -hmm. Did you catch that, wife? Because I am mature in my faith. <laughs> my faith only accepts. Why should say, Tanya? What God has promised. That's what he said. Tribulation works patience. Patience, experience, and experience hope. Mm -hmm. Hope then is expectation. So when I am mature in my faith, I am expecting, Tony, God have mercy. I am expecting what God said to manifest. When my faith is mature, I am convinced that in him there is always yes and never no. When I am mature in my faith, I understand that every promise of God is yea and amen in Christ Jesus. If he made the promise, then the promise has a yes attached to it. That if my faith, watch this, is in the promise maker, <laughs> then it will come to pass. My life lines up. And I walk now the walk of faith. I don't walk by sight. I walk because of what he said. The thing that drives me is the promise. And the promise drives me because I believe that God is faithful. I believe that he is not a man that he should lie, Trey, nor the son of man that he should repent. And so now I am only accepting what God has, I believe, against all odds. Oh, God, all right. I thought I was talking to people of faith. 
let, let's see if we can fix this. And back in Romans chapter number four, where the writer begins to deal again with Abraham. And he says this about Abraham. Abraham has this promise from God. And the promise is, I have made you a father of many nations. Not I will make you, but I have made you. In my mind, God says, see, Murray, you are already a father of many nations, though you have no children currently. And the Bible says that when Abram grabs a hold of that, it says, though he was old, uh, he did not consider his own body, nor the deadness of his wife Sarah's womb. But the Bible says that he continued in faith, not staggering at the promises of God. Y'all got to catch me in this. He did not stagger. He, he said, if God said it, I'm going to activate my faith, and I'm not taking no for an answer. Now, the Bible says that faith without works is dead being alone. So the question has to be asked, what act? The faith that Abram engage in in order to make the promise come to pass. I'm glad y'all asked. He was an old man married to a barren woman, but he did not look at those conditions and say that that would have the power to stop him. So what he and Sarah did is they kept on trying until the promise manifested. It. All right, if we didn't have children in here, I'd get more explicit. They kept engaging in the activity that it takes to produce a child until the child came. In other words, they did not take no for an answer. In 2022, I'm giving you a prophetic word now. In 2022, it's going to get worse before it gets better. That's the bad news. But here's the good news. If you will just continue in faith at the appointed time, what God promised will manifest and the breakthrough will happen. Am I preaching to anybody under the sound of my voice who is made up in your mind that if God promised it, that settles it, and if he didn't want me to have it, he shouldn't have promised it to me. But since he promised it to me, I will continue this walk of faith until it happens in my life. Lift your hands, open your mouth, and shout, yes, Lord. Shout, yes, Lord, again. Who am I preaching to in here? Who says, I made up in my mind that I will not accept no for an answer. The Lord told me to tell somebody, don't cast away your confidence that you have in his promises and in his word. He told me to tell somebody to pick that thing back up. Pick that dream back up. Pick that vision back up. Do what Abram did. The Bible declares that Abram understood that God was the one who quickens the dead and then calls those things that be not as though they were. I need you to tap yourself on the chest and begin to speak to every dead thing, every dead vision, every dead dream, every disappointed hope. I need you to just tap yourself on the chest and say, wake up and come to pass. God told me to tell somebody in here for every Lazarus issue that you got, he's getting ready to roll the stone away. And in 2022, if you walk in faith, he's going to call forth what you thought had died. Lift your hands, open your mouth, and shout, yes, Lord. These bad times have made me a better me. You need to tell somebody on your road that looks like they're interested that my bad times, it ain't no business what, uh, what I went through, but all my bad times have made me a better me. I'm stronger and I'm wiser. I'm better.
better than I've ever been before. I believe God on a level that I never believed in before. Am I preaching to anybody in here who's better? Well, my brothers and my sisters, I got one more minute. Happy New Year in 60 seconds. Pass it down your road and say, we're almost there. We've almost crossed over. We've almost stepped into another year. But I know that a better me has come out of these bad times because I've convinced that his unconditional love compels him to do the unusual and the unprecedented in my life. Listen to what Paul says and I'm closing. Tribulation works patience. Patience experience. Experience hope. And hope does not make me ashamed. Why am I not ashamed of what I've been through this year? Why am I not ashamed of my failures and my fallings? Why am I not ashamed of those times that it looked like God had turned his back on me? Why am I not ashamed of those times that it looked like my enemies were right about me? Why am I not ashamed of the times that I was embarrassed? Well, the Bible declares, he says that because his love was shed abroad in my heart, which means now I am convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt that God loves me. And as long as he loves me, that's all, that's all that matters. His love causes him to honor his word. His love causes him to turn my situation around. His love for me causes him to move in every situation and every circumstance that the enemy said would stop me from moving into my destiny. I wish you wave at somebody down your row and say, neighbor, I'm not bragging, but God loves me and I'm one of his favorites. You told the wrong person, look at somebody else and say that one thing that 2021 has proven to me that God, he loves me and he loves me with an unconditional love. How do I know? Because there were times that I gave up on him that he didn't give up on me there were times when I was faithless but even when I'm faithless God was faithful y'all excuse me I feel like preaching I know he loves me because my enemies were not able to triumph over me I know he loves me for when I went left and should have gone right. His mercy brought me back on course. Can I go higher? I know he loves me because when the enemy came in like a flood, his spirit raised up a standard against him. I know. No, he loves me because he didn't bring me this far to lead me. Can I go higher? Paul said, tribulation made me patient. My patience built my character. My character gave me hope. My hope would not waver concerning his promises and my hope convince me uh, that God uh, loves me uh, with a never-ending love. Uh, Y'all excuse me, uh, but I just heard God say uh, in 2022, uh, for those of you uh, who've been faithful, uh, he ain't just uh, going to manifest uh, what he promised, uh, but he's getting ready uh, to give you double. Uh, can I go higher? He's going to give you double uh, of what you've given. Uh, but watch this. Uh, this is the year uh, of the double portion, uh, which means uh, he ain't going to do uh, what he promised. Uh, but what he is going to do uh, is do exceedingly, uh, abundantly, uh, above all. Uh, you can ask or think, uh, where's my church? Uh, 
where those of you uh, who are ready now uh, to receive uh, the double portion uh, of God's blessing. Uh, don't fool me now. Uh, who in the house uh, is saying to God, uh, I'm ready uh, for you to blow my mind. Lift your hands. Uh, open your mouth uh, and go to shouting. Uh, God, uh, I'm ready uh, for you to blow uh, my mind uh, for every tear I cried. I thank you uh, for double the joy uh, for every loss I had. I thank you uh, for double uh, the provision uh, for every loss uh, I had. Thank you uh, for double victory. Will you wave down your robe? Uh, tell somebody. 2022, God's going to take your bad experience and he's going to use it for your good. Lift your hand, open your mouth and shout yes, shout yes, shout yes, shout yes, shout yes, shout yes, shout yes. Yes, Lord, I'm ready to receive. My faith looks up to you. Yes, I thank you in advance for what's about to be released in my life. Pass it down your road. Abundance, overflow, increase, victory, healing, deliverance, restoration, breakthrough, yes, yes, yes. It's six minutes past 12. I wish you tell somebody happy new year and happy new you. You told the wrong person. Happy New Year and Happy New You. You've been waiting, but the appointed time is on its way. And I believe that next year, this time, when we come into this place, everything, everything about your life is going to be different. Y'all ain't talking with me. Tell your neighbor, next year, this time, Everything about your life will be different. Your money, your relationship, your health, your business, everything is going to be different. Shout yes! Yeah. Yes! 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 trying to let it go but I heard God say I'm getting ready to reward you for your faith your faithfulness I'm getting ready to reward you for standing and keeping the keeping on shout yeah ah, yeah yeah Somebody ought to give him glory. Somebody ought to give him praise. Somebody ought to leap. Somebody ought to dance. You know what you would be doing. BC, before Christ, on 12 o'clock midnight on New Year's Eve, they couldn't keep you off the floor. They couldn't keep you seated. I need somebody in here to give God must do him uh, and praise him uh, because your bad times uh, are making you a better you, uh, are fitting you for what he promised. Shout yes! Better, better, better. 
bow your heads. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you, and then I'm going to turn this over to Bishop. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the bad times that produce the better us. We're stronger, we're wiser, we're better, we're becoming more and more like you each and every day, and we thank you for it. I pray for each and every person under the sound of my voice. I bind the spirit of discouragement the spirit of disappointment, the spirit of disheartenment. And I declare, oh, my say, and I declare a decree tonight that God, you didn't bring them this far to leave them. And I declare that every dream, every vision, every prophetic word that has been released over their lives, every word that has come from you, God, that it is yet manifesting even now. Thank you, God, for your timing. Thank you, God, for your timing. Thank you for sustaining us and keeping us until the appointed time of manifestation. And tonight, I declare a decree. God, as a prophet of yours, that not one word that you've spoken concerning your people, not one promise that you've spoken over their lives will go unfulfilled in the name of Jesus. Now, God, I pray that you would heal family members, touch from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. As a matter of fact, God, do a work of healing in this place tonight. Thank you, God, for dissolving tumors. Thank you, God, for causing cancer to flee our bodies. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for regulating blood pressure. Thank you. Thank you, God, for regulating diabetes. Thank you. And we declare a decree now that it's done and it's done for real in Jesus name Amen what makes the word of God so for you is that you receive it I'll say that again. What makes the word of God so for you is that you claim it. Tonight, claim what it is. You need claim it. I heard God said, I'm giving you a blank check tonight. I've signed it. I need you to fill it out. Whatever you need. These bad times have produced a better you. Your faith is where it needs to be now to see me move in your life. First of all, if there's anybody here who does not know Jesus Christ as his or her personal Lord and Savior, tonight is your night. You can know him in the free pardon of your sin. You don't get cleaned up to get saved. You get saved to get cleaned up. Ask me how I know I'm a chiefest of sinners, ex-drug user, ex-drug dealer. The worst person I know because I'm the only person I truly know. But if God could accept me for who I am, he will accept you for who you are. Is there one tonight who wants to give his or her life to Jesus Christ? Would you please come? These bad times, these bad times, these bad times have produced a better you. Would you come? Would you come? Tonight, if you're not united with any local fellowship, the Gap Church is one of the best churches anywhere on the face of this earth. It's my home church. This is my church. I recommend my pastor and my first lady. I recommend my church family. If you want to connect tonight, please, ma'am, please, sir, would you come? Is there one? Well, if everybody's saved, satisfied, and in the right souls, put those hands together and give God a hand clap of praise. I want to do one more thing. And I'm going to, uh, going to, uh, 
serve communion. Tonight, I want you to join me in a seed, I really believe in seed sowing. Faith without works is dead. And when I consider Abraham's example, Abraham did what was uncomfortable to get what was unusual. Let me say that one more time. He did what was uncomfortable in order to get what was unusual. So tonight, I'm going to sow, I'm going to begin our sowing tonight with a seed of $202. And I'm asking those of you who can join me in sowing that seed to please, ma'am, please, sir, join me if you'll get in the aisle. Those of you who can't do the 202, those of you who can do somewhere between 20 and 202, if you can do 52, if you can do 62, 72, 102, will you join me in giving this offering? And Abraham believed God, and he staggered not in his promises. He believed him who said, I have made you a father of many nations. Without a son, he believed God. Those of you who are going to join me, please stand. Thank you so very kindly. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. All over this house, all over this house, those of you who are going to sow this $202 gift, thank you. Those of you who say, Bishop, I don't have 202, but I'm falling somewhere between uh, one, 202 and 22. I want you to stand very quickly. Very quickly. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. We don't do this to put you on the spot. We really do this to get you to motivate the rest of us to give. Those of you who say, Bishop, I'm going to give the $22. Will you stand? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Who else do we have? Thank you, sir. I see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those of you who say, Bishop, you know what? I'm going to give the best I can tonight. Thank you, ma'am. Those of you who say, Bishop, I'm going to give the best that I can tonight because I realize my best is equal to what you asked. If you're going to give your best, I need you to stand on your feet tonight. Thank you. I see you. Thank you, Brother Dooney. I appreciate you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I see you standing all over the building. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you, son. Thank you. Those of you who say, Bishop, you know what? I really have a desire to give it. I just don't have it. I believe that God honors your desire. So those of you who will stand in faith and say, that's me. I want you to stand. I really wish I had it to give. I wouldn't. Thank you so much. Don't be ashamed. 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 Over 30 some odd years ago, I remember going and sitting under the ministry of Bishop and Pastor Jen Wright, and they would ask for offerings, and I didn't have it. And I would cry and ask God, God, one day I want to give. And the Lord blessed me. And it's been sacrificial sometimes, but he's done it. So those of you who have the desire, I'm telling you, he'll honor your desire. I want you to stand lift those gifts. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight for the honor, the privilege of sowing and the promise that's attached to it. You said we shouldn't be deceived. You're not mocked. Whatever we sow, that shall we also reap. So we thank you, God, that what we sow tonight is a seed that leaves our hand but does not leave our life. And we declare 30, 60, 100 fold, even a thousand times. Blessing multiplied because of our giving in Jesus' name. Blow the giver's mind tonight, and I speak Ephesians 3 and 20 over their lives, that you're doing them 
exceeding abundantly above all that they can ever ask or think. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, ma'am, please, sir, if you will come and give your gift. That we please. Thank you, ma'am. Thrust of Romans 5 is that we have access to the grace of God because of what Jesus has done. Tonight we eat and we drink acknowledging and confessing and testifying that he is the source of our strength is the strength of our lives. That while we are yet in this process and our faith is being matured and strengthened, it is ultimately because of the work that he did on Calvary on our behalf that we even have a right to the tree of life and all the blessings that he promised. So tonight we eat and we drink thanking him for this new year. Yes, oh my. Yes, sir. Many didn't make it. But we're the ones who did. Brother Quay shared his story of how eight days he was in the hospital not being able to breathe but God. I dare somebody to think of your but God moments in 2021. I say ain't no fool. I dare you to think of the time that you almost lost your mind. But God. I dare you to think of the time that the enemy tried to convince you to take your own life. <laughs> but God. Father, bless the bread, bless the wine as we eat and we drink to remember you. In Jesus' name. And on the night our Lord was betrayed, he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it and he said, this is my body that is given for you. Take ye and eat all of it.
your right hand. She said, this is my blood. It's been shed for the remission of the sins of many. You ought to be getting excited now because the one who has been forgiven much, that same one loves much. He's forgiven you for so much. I can't help but love it. Never. the Lord's death until he come. I'm going to turn this over into the hands of Bishop Jen Wright. But I wish you just tell one more person one more time, Happy New Year and Happy New You. Because we love him and we are called according to his purpose. Can you bless God again for Bishop Long tonight? I am just so thankful that God has joined us together in ministry and the Lord is doing great things in Bishop Long's life. And I tell you, marriage is doing him well. 
Amen. I, I think his preaching has advanced. Amen. He, 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 was, he was a preacher before, but now I tell you, I think he has gone on another level. Amen. Do you agree, uh, Lady Long? Do you agree? Oh, I, I, I thought so. All right. Well, we're just so grateful for all of you tonight. And thank God again for the Temple Church International. God bless you. Thank members of this wonderful church and uh, those of you, we bless God for our praise team ministry, those that are uh, a combination of the two together, mesh together, and all of the musicians, God bless you tonight. Thank all of you so much. We appreciate you, amen, and our media ministry and all of you. We're just so delighted for those who have come from near and far to be a part of this worship tonight, Deacon Edwards and his lovely wife, Gloria, all the way from Charleston, South Carolina. We're just so happy to have them here with us. I am just tickled pink to see you all and to see how well you're still looking and doing. Praise God for you. And, uh, of course, we are just grateful now that uh, the Lord has granted mercy unto all of us to allow us to see 2022. Y'all, that's the mercies of God. Yes, yes, you know many people who did not make it. You've gone to many funerals, I'm sure, or wakes or visitations or You've been affected some way or the other by someone's death. But the Lord spared you. And I believe that what God has put in you, that dream, that vision, is for an appointed time. That if you remember what Bishop was preaching on tonight and you stay focused and though you may go through some challenges... It's working for your good because God takes delight in turning what looks like a setback into a setup. And I believe 2022 is your year. Why don't you claim it? I said, why don't you claim it? Yeah, it's, it's what you say. 2022 is my year. I'm going to receive every promise that the Lord has made unto me, and I'm expecting it to happen. You got to raise your expectation level, and you got to change your way of thinking, and you got to begin to believe that God is going to bring it to pass. If you believe, the Bible says, all things are possible. Amen. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. And don't you talk yourself out of it. Just because things are not working right now. You keep working at it. And in God's own time, your change is going to come. And so I thank God for all of you. I want to thank God tonight for the Gap Church International. I thank God for the Gap Church International Bishop Long was right. This is one of God's great churches. And, and these are the Lord's outstanding people. And I thank God for allowing us to be a part of the Gap Church International. And I want to say to every one of you, we love you. And Happy New Year to you. And get ready because we're kicking it up in high gear in 2022. Amen. Some awesome things are going to happen in 2022. You might as well get ready. Our territory has already started to enlarge. God is going to bring us into that good land that he has promised us. And unprecedented doors are going to open. Things are going to happen suddenly. Oh, glory to God. 
I'm telling you what I heard in the spirit. God says, I'm going to open doors for you suddenly. And don't be afraid of what I'm going to show you and what I open unto you. And then he said something strange. He said, and don't apologize for it. Lord have mercy. Amen. He said, don't apologize for it. But what I want you to do is I want you to brag on me. Tell everybody God did it. Hallelujah. So you might as well get ready, Gap Church International. There's some great things, and, and we are launching out in 2022 upon our theme that the Holy Ghost has given us, and I'll be sharing more about that on this coming Sunday. I want to speak to you prophetically and decree some things to you that God has given us to say. But we are going to command the Lord's hand through faith in 2022. We're going to command this hand. And I'm going to teach you how you do that according to the scriptures. And then when we lay it out and teach it to you, it's up to you to put it to work. And you're going to see what God will do when you stand on his word because he's ready to manifest it in the earth. Thank you again and I look forward Sunday morning we're back here at 10 a.m. and we are excited about our new year. How many of y'all are really excited about 2022? Well let me try it again because that clap was a little faint. How many of y'all are really excited about 2022? That's right, that's right, that's right, amen. Let me hear you open up your mouth and say, I shall live and not die, and I'm going to declare the works of the Lord in 2022. That's right, that's right. I want you to live, and I want you to live abundantly according to the word of God the Lord. Now we're getting ready to leave my wonderful people and I want us to practice social distancing.